Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a brand new product here at Apogee Components and uh, I have with me B. Dale Garby who is the inventor or one of the inventors of it. One of the two. One of the two and uh, basically we've been calling it a GPS payload but it actually does more than that. So first uh, B. Dale kind of explain what this new product does for us and what it does for the modeler. Well, this starts out being a fully capable dual deploy altimeter for use in a model rocket. And dual deploy, of course, means that it can put out, um, it can uh, initiate pyrotechnic charges to put out a parachute or a streamer or something at apogee, and then to uh, deploy another one at a predetermined altitude closer to the ground for a, a main parachute or something like that. Uh -huh. What differentiates this from the other altimeters that are out there is that this board also uh, has a, a full radio link built into it and a GPS receiver. So in addition to the um, functions of a normal rocket altimeter, we can also do radio direction finding uh, to pick up the uh, payload after it comes back to ground if we have any trouble finding it. Um, but even more than that, with the GPS receiver on board, um, we get information during the flight telling us exactly where the rocket is. And so uh, on most flights when things are working right, uh, finding the rocket is a lot like geocaching, except there's something really exciting at the end of the hunt. Oh yeah. <laughs> so who would benefit most from this product? Um, we initially developed um, this board because uh, my partner Keith and I uh, got tired of losing rockets. Uh, we like to fly uh, rockets that go really high. Um, and we also like to fly rockets with uh, interesting payloads that we absolutely want to be able to get back. And uh, anytime you're setting a rocket up high enough uh, that it may go completely out of sight, uh, having some kind of radio tracking in it is, we think, essential. And the GPS capability means that we can fly rockets higher and with more uh, expensive payloads in them with a high degree of confidence that we'll be able to find those and get those back, uh, whether they drop into you know, the, the deep sage uh, that's present in some of the desert launch sites that we go to, or if it drops down into the canyons adjacent to some of the other uh, launch sites we go to, or even if it just uh, comes down in, in tall grass or shrubs or, or bushes or something where it might normally be very hard to spot. Okay. All right. Uh, kind of break everything out. This is, when you when you buy it, this is what you're going to get. It's just a small package, and I'll let you open it. And that's right. We kind of open it up and tell us what each part is and what it does. Okay, we call this a Telemetrum Starter Kit. And the Starter Kit is because it has almost all the things that you need to have in order to be able to um, put together and, and fly in your first rocket. Um, this little wrapped up uh, anti-static bag has the board that goes in the rocket. Um, this is uh, the part that we use on the ground. Uh, this little uh, blue box has inside of it um, a radio uh, and a uh, computer interface. So this basically allows you to plug into any computer that has a USB interface and with an antenna attached on the other side, uh, this is what allows you to receive all of the telemetry from the rocket during flight. Um, but it's actually not just a receiver, it's a bi-directional radio. You can also use this uh, over the radio link uh, during your ground preparations to uh, verify the configuration of the rocket, to adjust its uh, configuration and, and do things like that. We also include a, a programming cable um, this is a completely open hardware and open source design, so we actually invite people who are sufficiently technically advanced uh, from a programming standpoint to consider uh, modifying the firmware on the board if they'd like. But this also allows the average user to be able to reprogram in the field if we come out with new versions of the firmware for the board that add new features or something like that. Um, we also include a, a USB cable because uh, the way we charge batteries and so forth and configure and get data out of the board that goes in the rocket is with the USB interface. Uh, there's a battery. Uh, this is a lithium polymer rechargeable battery. Our board can work with many different sized lithium polymer batteries. Uh, the one that we ship with the starter kit is a 900 milliamp hour. It's about the same physical size as a 9 volt alkaline cell, but it's got a lot more energy in it um, and it's fully rechargeable. So uh, we think that's ecologically a good thing. This battery is a good size for any airframe from about 38 millimeters and up. Um, mm -hmm. The board itself can fit inside of an Apogee 29 millimeter coupler. Wow. So you could consider flying this in 29 millimeter minimum diameter projects, but for that you'd have to source a, a different smaller battery because this one's too big across to fit inside there. 
And then, of course, um, nothing would be complete without a cool cut vinyl decal oh, for yeah. your airframe or your notebook. <laughs> so, the board itself, um, I'll open this up and we'll show you what it looks like and we can talk about what it's got on it. Uh, as you can see, this board is really very small. It's about the same size as many other uh, simple dual deploy altimeters uh, that are on the market today. But this has a few more uh, things on it. First of all, on the top of the board, uh, right here in the center, that's the GPS antenna and a little beeper. Uh, this connector down here, the greenish one, um, supports the connection of two E-matches or the, uh, actually the Quest Q2G2 igniters work very well for initiating charges also. Okay. And then the final two pins are for a power on off switch. The white connector here is where we attach the battery and that just snaps in. And it's a positively locking, snapping connector. And because it's orthogonal to the orientation of the, the rocket's flight, it's unlikely that uh, that connector would ever be pulled loose during flight. So this is direction is up? Yep, the uh, wire antenna up here for the UHF radio linked to the ground is the end that goes towards the nose. <clears throat> and so normally this would be the top, this would be the bottom. Okay. The two red connectors on here, the little one is the debugging programming connector, as I mentioned, with programming cable, any one of our devices can be used to reprogram any other one. Um, so you can use this board, for example, with the cable to reprogram this one, or you can use this to reprogram that one, which is very convenient. Okay. And then the eight pin connector is both the end that's used on the side that's doing the programming, but it also is what we call a companion interface. It'll allow us to interface uh, boards with additional sensors um, and other cool stuff. Uh, we have several companion boards that we're thinking about right now, and we'll probably be introducing some of those in the coming months. Okay. But all the excitement for hardware guys like me is actually in the back of the board, which is just chock-a-block full of surface mount components. A little quick tour. At this end, we have the uh, uh, radio components associated with providing the filters and so forth to make the radio work. That tiny little chip there is the RF system on chip that has the radio and the processor and the memories and the analog to digital converter required for all the sensors. It's basically the brains of the board there. This larger chip over here is the GPS receiver. That's a complete GPS receiver on one chip. This is the accelerometer. There's a power supply for that. Barometric pressure sensor, an onboard data logging memory that I uh, can store up to one megabyte of data so that uh, we can actually, uh, that's enough space to store several flights worth of telemetry, but the current firmware we only store one flight at a time. Uh, it's the USB connector. Uh, we use USB to charge the, the battery. The battery. That, that's, that would be this where this plug That's in. correct. We'd use that cable, and any time that cable is plugged in and the battery is plugged in, it'll charge the battery. There's an LED on the board to tell you when it's charging, and when that LED goes out, it means that we're at approximately full charge. Okay. There's one other LED on here that's used to give some status information about uh, how the board's doing, uh, you know, where it is in its startup process and so forth. Uh, in normal use, you pretty much can ignore that. And then down at this end of the board, we have the battery charging circuitry and then the uh, transistors that are used to fire the ejection charges. And as I mentioned, this supports two pyro channels one for Apogee and one for deployment of a main chute at a determined altitude.